Welcome to this video where today we're going to talk about what a dual PC setup is, the components that you need, and how to piece them together on a very simple and basic level. This also will apply to console streamers looking to move towards using a streaming PC. So with that said, let's get started. Honestly, I've been trying to make this video for the better part of a year. It's a really complex and difficult subject, mainly down to what kind of specs that you need to build a streaming PC. Now this video doesn't cover that because there are millions and millions of subreddit posts on the Twitch subreddit about what specs do I need, what do I need for this and that. My answer in terms of that is any quad core i5 or i7 of the last five years or any of the AMD Ryzen 5 or 7 series will be a more than capable usable streaming PC. Anything with a quad core. Literally go back as far as the 3770K which is an i7 and that will be a more than sufficient streaming PC for what you need. Heck, you can even do it on your phone. If your phone can do it, most likely the PC that you have. You can literally stream off almost everything. The goal of a dual PC setup is to squeeze as much quality out of the PC and out of each component without sacrificing quality. This relates to the resolution that you stream at and the CPU preset that you can use to give a better encoded video file that you send to the streaming service that you use. I personally stream on Twitch, but there are other sites out there such as Mixer or YouTube itself, Hitbox, and several others as well that you may use. I will mostly gravitate things towards Twitch because it's the one I'm most familiar with, but by no means does that not apply to the other sites as well. CPU presets is how hard your CPU, your processor is working to encode that video file into within that bitrate. So the lower the CPU preset, the better it will encode your video. This is why we use a dual PC for bigger high-end setups, because you are separating the process of the gaming and the streaming so that both can do the job as effectively as possible. If you have a single quad-core i7, for example, you might be able to put out a 720p, 30 or 60 FPS stream at around 3500 kilobits per second on a very fast CPU preset. This is completely acceptable, this is completely fine. But as you move higher up into streaming and get more involved in it, you may want to increase that quality slightly. After, of course, upgrading your audio gear. Audio gear should always be your number one priority. I made a video on audio gear if you would like to know how to get started with that. It covers mixers, mics, and just a basic introduction on how to set that stuff up and some recommendations for you if you're looking to do that. For the CPU preset, you want to try and bring that as low as you can without causing any encoding errors. In my examples and what I'm talking about today, we'll be discussing mainly OBS. There are other alternatives there such as XSplit and Streamlabs OBS. There are a couple of others as well, but I have no experience of them at all and only limited experience of XSplit itself, but I know that's the most popular alternative to OBS. OBS is free, while XSplit is a paid software, so I do like to lean more towards OBS in recommendation, especially if you're just starting out with streaming, because you don't want to drop a ton of money on programs that you don't even know that you might use that much. It's also pretty flexible in terms of plugins, it's pretty well supported, and yeah, you'll find a lot more information, most likely about OBS online and tutorials than you might do XSplit. So, in terms of hardware, what do we need? We need a streaming PC, we need a gaming PC or a console, we need a capture card, two monitors, one for each PC or the console and the streaming PC, and we need HDMI cables. Now, this isn't the only way you can do a two PC setup, the way that I'm going to describe to you today. This is just what I feel is the most visually easy to understand of the process. There are alternatives and alternatives within this process itself 
but I don't want to bombard and overcomplicate this. I just want to explain how the setup kind of works. You need your gaming PC or console, and you take the HDMI that would typically go out to your monitor, and you plug that into your capture card. The capture card then passes through the signal, and you plug an HDMI in the other end of it, and that goes to your monitor. So this little device sits in between that chain of the two HDMI cables. What it's then doing is it's cloning the video from that, taking that copy of the video and sending it to your streaming PC, into the program you're using of OBS, XSplit, and so on. Then you take that image and that is what you are going to encode and compress and send to your audience on Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, or any of the other sites. Depending on your budget and the products that you like, you will have a, an array of choice in terms of capture card. I personally use Elgato products. They do not sponsor me or pay me in any way to say anything about their products, but it is the only brand that I have personally used and I own several of their things. So I'm pretty familiar with working with their products. Other brands like Ava Media or Magewell by no means does that mean they are bad products or that they are not better than Elgato. It just, this is the only products that I own and have used for the last two to three years. The way in which you'll get audio from these systems is through the capture card as well. So it will actually send the audio over the HDMI. You just need to go into your Windows settings and make it listen to this device on the desktop. You can do it directly in OBS as well. If you go into the properties of one of the capture cards, you can choose the audio source type and it will play only when OBS is open. Lastly, another alternative to a capture card, which is a free alternative and unfortunately doesn't work for consoles, I'm sorry. But if you're going PC to PC, you could look at what is called the NDI plugin. What this allows you is to stream from your gaming PC to your streaming PC over your home network and circumvent any internet barriers that you may have. So what that means is you can export a 1080p 50,000 kilobits per second video from your gaming PC, send it to your streaming PC that then receives that high resolution, high bitrate video, compresses it down and sends that out to the service that you stream on. You're probably thinking, well, why would I have the streaming PC if I'm going to stream it, stream from the gaming PC to the streaming PC? Well, the benefit of this is it doesn't require or very, it requires very little CPU processing because of that high bitrate. That high bitrate offsets any CPU processing that you need to do, so it won't really affect any gameplay performance in a negligible way it will provide a high quality video file to your streaming PC, which is what you want and why you would have a capture card anyway. And it's over your home network. So you're not streaming it over your data. So you're not worried about data caps. You're not limited by the speed of your internet. It's the speed of your home network. So you would do that and you would put your CPU preset to the highest, less compressed of like super mega hyper, ultra, fast, whatever it is, increase the bitrate to like 50,000, maybe even 30,000, like anything that you think is reasonable. You send that video file over to the streaming PC. The streaming PC then takes that video file and compresses it down into the 3,500 kilobits per second at a more reasonable, better CPU preset, like fast or medium, if your PC is capable of that. That way, you get the best of both worlds, you get a high quality stream sent to your channel, and it doesn't impact your gaming PC as much that you have performance issues. The other benefit of this, which can come from capture cards, is tearing. This will alleviate tearing. If you have a high refresh rate monitor that you game on, and you stream 60 FPS from that to through the NDI plugin to the streaming PC, you won't get any frame tearing or vsync or any issues like that because the source that it's coming from already has dealt with that. It's just re-encoding and repackaging that video. If you are sending a higher than 60 FPS video file 
to one of these capture cards to your streaming PC, you're going to introduce tearing or desync where you get the lines that stroke through your image. This is just because it can't deal with it. It's getting sent too many frames and it can't keep up with it. You can fix this by turning on things like VSync or frame limiters in the games that you're playing, but if you're doing something more competitive where you require that higher refresh rate and that higher frame rate, you may want to go potentially with either the 4K60 Pro or if there is another one out there, I don't know of it at the time of making this, that there is another card out there that does high refresh rates at 1080p. Maybe you can find one of them. Or do the NDI plugin, which will alleviate that problem. You're streaming from the gaming PC through to the streaming PC. The streaming PC is then outputting that image to the platform that you stream on. I'm not, I've already crammed too much into this video, and hopefully it made any kind of sense. <laughs> so if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at camcorderkid. If you're on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash camcorderkid. If you're on Instagram, it's camcorderkid87. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. If you didn't, I'm sure you'll tell me. And uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.